Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. We are so happy to be here uh, again to talk about uh, a topic that is very dear to all our hearts at HR Circle, and that is payroll. So I'm happy to introduce uh, Rudy, Rudy Derwerk. He's here with us to discuss uh, this topic. And I would like to let him introduce himself, if that is all right. Absolutely, Kiara, and thanks for the nice introduction and thanks for having me, HR Circle team, on, on this podcast. <laughs> so it's really Druk, and, and actually I have to admit, I'm, I'm a, I have a payroll addiction. And the payroll addiction started about four years ago in my first job that I landed with a common international payroll company called SD Works. And that's where I learned the ropes of payroll uh, first. So, so did you as go a young... into payroll deliberately, are you telling me? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, Jerry, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Guilty as charged. Um, yeah, the payroll ropes as, as a young guy, and, and but but had a lot of fun, uh, even in those days. And uh, that's where I also uh, put international payroll a little bit on the map uh, initially. Then 20 years later, it was time to go. And um, then I did my first tour of duty that was at Coca-Cola Enterprises, where I was the European head of HR systems. Uh, I left them three years later to um, actually do uh, more in advice, go more into the advisory world. And I became pr principal advisor for uh, HR and payroll outsourcing at a company that was called Acroterra, though no longer exists. It's, uh, they were acquired by uh, KPMG back in 2011. Uh, and not long after that, I left uh, KPMG as well, and I went it alone. So I decided to be a one-man band, uh, uh, and I did as an independent HR and payroll sourcing advisor. So I had a great experience of working with fantastic teams of uh, big global companies, uh, AstraZeneca, ABM, if you named them, all, all the very nice logos. And I learned a lot, of course, uh, working with uh, with those teams. Um, so, but now um, with um, the last, uh, let's say, home straight of my career journey in sight, uh, I'm, I'm, I just made it to 60, by the way, so you can see that uh, I have found two great co-founders with whom uh, we came to this idea to creating this company, Paybix. And um, so Paybix, um, have, we have built with Paybix, we have built an, an, an international payroll aggregation SaaS platform, mouthful. Uh, uh, for European SMEs, so we 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 put the bar 250 employees, so uh, everything below 250 employees we're interested, uh, and we are agreeing genuine partnerships with the uh, in-country payroll providers, as they are called. So we, there's partnerships will probably end up for the 30 countries that we will deliver with about 20 to 25 partnerships. Actually, we're well on the way. Uh, we've uh, most of uh, Western Europe is already covered, and we're uh, very close to covering uh, a lot of the Eastern European countries. So, in other words, and uh, here's a little bit of pun: I've come full HR circle. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> love it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I find really interesting that you mention so specifically the size fit for customers and for implementation. And uh, so, sometime you, you have the feeling talking to the big implementers that, well, you know what, this is the product we go to market with. This is a one size fit all. Mm -hmm. So can I ask something really mean? Is that true in your uh, opinion? Oh, it's definitely not mean. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, the last thing I would, expect, uh, I would say for you is that you're mean. No, no, absolutely not, Carrie. It's a very good question, by the way. And, and uh, let me start with the, the short answer. And uh, that's always easiest. The short answer is no, there's not one size fits all. Uh, although we, we have seen, uh, as, you, as you mentioned rightfully, uh, that a, a large number of providers put that as the holy grail. Uh, you can do global payroll with one single system, with one single contract, with one single service delivery model. Um, I am not a strong believer, to say the least, of, of that. Um, and whilst I'm saying this, I also want to point out that um, the, 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 the usual uh, or the, the key players in the global BPO market do a good job uh, in, in general, but focus or the service delivery model is more around and the technology is more around the larger volumes. Uh, so they do good jobs for the larger volumes. That's where they've scaled for. Uh, that's how they put their cost model as well, because if they want to compete against in-house payroll processing, for large volumes, of course, you need to do it better with better processes and better technology. So they really focus on that. 
Um, but if you look today, actually the only uh, global payroll solution worthy of that name is still SAP. Yeah. Uh, in all those years, and probably we're, we're, we're close to 50 years maybe now, there's not one competitor of SAP has been able actually to bring a global payroll solution to market. Yeah. And you know, that means something. That means that actually, you know, it is very tough to have a global, one single global payroll solution. Okay, but SAP is for large, fairly large volumes, for large firms. Not maybe, I'm not maybe 100% sure of this because, of course, you can also use the SAP payroll solution for smaller volumes. Mm -hmm. It's there, the solution is there, it works, uh, it is compliant, it is accurate, it's timely, but it's also quite expensive. And you may find yourselves in countries with large or with small volume of employees, and those entities or those countries don't necessarily have real payroll experts, yeah, payroll professionals. Okay. So they will have a payroll administrator, probably somebody who takes on the time and the, and the earnings and the deductions and puts it in the system. But it's, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming for, for these people. So I would say, okay, fantastic solution for the larger volumes, not always the best solution for the smaller volumes. So, so that's why I'm saying actually one size fits all, be careful. Also, almost on the services side, the global payroll BPOs, as I already mentioned, they, they generally, they, they are organized for large volumes and, and they, they put like uh, tiered service models with shared yeah. service centers. Mm -hmm. And then you will end up, and as a large, if you're a large country with, you know, uh, good payroll professionals, you know, you, you know enough, but the danger is if you, as a smaller company, if you don't have the payroll expertise, you call a service agent, you ask a question, they need to liaise with the experts in, in country because you don't you never get to speak to those experts directly you need to go via service agent comes back with an answer now they may be lost in translation there may be all kinds of misunderstandings but as a payroll administrator you'll never know why is there a barrier for smaller countries to go directly to the local payroll expert talk in their own language uh, all culture all even the time zone is the same eh? so that's something that I think the global payroll providers need to think a little bit more through uh, because that's a real uh, demand of the uh, small volume countries with uh, payroll administrators instead of payroll experts. So finally, there's a budget question. Now we already mentioned it's it's uh, if you implement a, a uh, ERP solution for your payroll or for your HR, of course, implementing that for large volumes, if you could the cost per employee, it's okay. If you see like certain countries with maybe less than 20 employees, you still need to localize or, or do some, some configuration for those countries, it becomes really cost prohibitive. Yeah? So here again, is it really one size fits all? Yes, if you have deep pockets, uh, but not everyone has deep pockets. Uh, uh, and, and therefore, I would tend to say uh, maybe, but with a bit of nuance, my answer would be no, there's no one size fits all. So your product is focused on 250 and less. Right. Mm -hmm. Employees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What What's different? Th thanks for your question. Uh, what different is that, um, as I said, so they, the expertise in the first place. Now, people rely on their payroll provider intensely. Yeah? You, you don't you don't want you don't want the uh, government bodies uh, knocking your knocking your door all the time or, or people employees picketing on your doorstep because you know, the payroll is wrong and, and they got the unions on your on your neck. And so they right. are relying so heavily. And eventually it will also uh, have a, a detrimental effect on the brand of the company. So you would have to avoid that. Yeah? Um, and, you know, it, it is it is not easy to find payroll people these days. Yeah? <laughs> they are in uh, they're short of numbers. So, uh, so when you find somebody, you also need to make sure that they are served and that they are supported well by a payroll provider locally, not globally, yeah? because um, you know what we see happen often is um, you know um, whilst whilst it's well the process is well in place, but the follow on the follow up, and even the guidance that you get as a payroll administrator in smaller countries is not up to standard, right? Um, mm -hmm. You expect a little bit more than just a straightforward yes or no uh, as an answer. Oh, you can do this or you can do that. And then you find it out. You need to find it out yourself. You really need to have that guidance, white glove service, I call it, for small volume countries. You don't get that with a very large 
uh, players. Yeah? I'm not going to name uh, name them, but they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so payroll professionals, uh, they they also they are keen in general to learn about uh, new stuff in the market. So what are the modern day uh, solutions for the modern day um, you know processes, uh, process designs? How can we get access to that? And um, if the distance is too far, you know, the payroll professional will not start contacting their payroll provider because it's they're somewhere, you know, uh, whatever, a local hub or so in a central hub and they don't. But when you are close to your payroll provider, you can start asking questions. That, OK, am I am I not paying too high salaries? Am I paying too much overtime? Are there different ways actually to reduce my cost base? And payroll is 70 to 80 percent in many cases of the total cost of the company. So if you can reduce that with two percent, it's an enormous amount. So, and and if you can do that local to local, it's much easier. Yeah. Even if you pay a little bit to to your payroll provider, he will he will he will really do an effort to help you to get better understanding of how can you can optimize your total labor cost, for instance. That is something that you will not get easily from a global payroll provider, I think. That's that's an interesting point of view, actually. You're right. Because the, the optimization can be incredibly rewarding mm -hmm. and it can be it's probably the, the business case on its own yeah. to to say, you know what, it may be working. It may all be working fine. But uh, the concept of, hey, don't stop the boat, don't rock the boat, keep right. going. Sometimes yeah. I actually prevent uh, savings that can be gathered yeah. and uh, and can make uh, can make a break uh, yeah. a budget. Yeah. And, and mind you, I, I do understand that that companies say, hey, our payroll is working. It, you know, we don't have too many issues with it. And why if it's not fixed, if it's not broken, why fix it? Things like that. Right. But you can miss out on a lot of opportunities there. Okay. And um, most the, the biggest opportunity is you need to save on your labor cost. And you can. But you will not know if you you don't are if you're not a payroll expert in the country, you will not know. And even payroll experts, you know, they need to have a sounding board also at the other side so that they can really do some sparring with the uh, with the local payroll provider on and we see it as we, we we're doing it for our customers as well that's one of the first thing we think okay how can we optimize even when we transfer our customers from another uh you know uh incumbent payroll provider that's the first thing we do is okay haven't you missed out on some subsidies sometimes it's just, you know in europe there's a lot of subsidies mm -hmm. uh often in those countries and if you miss them you know you leave money on the table yeah so for us it's important it is an investment to buy new software or maybe to change from your payroll provider. But at the same time, you know, as, as you mentioned, Chiara, you know, your, your business case can bottom line can be green if you look at all the opportunities you have for your cost savings in the payroll. Yeah, you just raised a really good point. I mean, I managed a global payroll system and what you just said, I didn't realize that there were subsidies in different oh, yeah. countries yeah. throughout Europe. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's a, yeah. That could be a big mess. Yeah, and, and it's constantly changing. So it, keeping up to date with all those new decisions of governments on making sure that people are, you know, the, in stimulating the employment and, and stimulating the employment is still, even though in these times, it's still very important. Um, yeah, and Belgium yeah, is, uh, my country is Belgium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my country yeah. is Belgium. We have a ton of, a ton of possible uh, savings that you can make through subsidizations, through, yeah, you know all kinds of stimulations that uh, that are there. Okay. And you know, um, even uh, even if you look at it from the, it, it benefits the company, but in the end, there is there are also benefits that can be directly sharing and making your uh, proposition more exciting huh? for the employee. Because sometimes it's money directly. There are uh, subsidies that go directly in the pocket of the employee if you need, need if if you can ask. Absolutely. And suddenly. A salary that appears to be on the low side may actually be compensated by uh, supp supplements from the government or by benefits. Absolutely. And if you don't know about them, you cannot put them on your value proposition uh -huh. and uh, both the employee and the company are missing out. Correct. Correct. To totally yeah. correct. And it's, it's about money, but it's also about uh, employee well-being. 
so so often uh, also governments they see the issue with burnouts and what have you all over the place so they would also start working on programs uh, and you know um, all kinds of subsidies again that allows you as an employer to not having to spend that money out of your pocket but to use the government's money a little bit eh? Uh, to to stick well to bring in such programs for for employee well-being. You miss out on these if you're not uh, looking uh, in the right direction. I'd say. Yeah. So for a global company, even it, it pays to have that local uh, yeah. understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the I think one of the other um, aspects of 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 the payroll. When you're working like you are uh, with with aggregators and whatnot is integration and ensuring you have the right data in your payroll system at the right time to get and, and in the right format um yeah. to be able to process the payroll we know that a lot of european payrolls can be quite complex france italy i mean even belgium is not considered as complex as those but it still has quite some complex as, uh, as you're well aware, Rudy. Um, so, how, what are, you know, what are, what are you doing, and what have you seen, mm. and um, any, any advice you give to customers who are, who are looking in this area? Yeah, thanks, thanks. Great question, Luke. And it's indeed all about integration these days. Uh, we, we hear about APIs and the, the old days of SFTP and, and and all that stuff. It's 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 done, right? It's 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 worked for 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 a while, but now we need to focus more on the the modern way of uh, of integrating. But not only only the way or the format in which we integrate. It's it's also very much about why have we not managed to really integrate when we are working with local ICP. So we have a global payroll system or global HCM system, whatever, and you integrate with payroll, but up to a certain level. That integration goes to, in most cases, to, okay, we'll do a global or regional template. Yeah? We, we fill the template with data and we send it to the local provider. Yeah? If, if, if it's not the own uh, in-house provider and you work with ICPs, which also all the big guys need to do yeah? because they are not present in all the countries. So then you start working with local providers, local payroll providers, ICPs, and they have their own backend system. Now that backend system is full of localized data for payroll. I'm not talking about HR here, really payroll data, payroll specific data. If you go, if you look at systems today, the global uh, ACM systems, they will send you, you know, just pure employee data. It's not really payroll data they send, right? Then you need to start thinking, okay, okay I'm sending this to my ICP, but the ICP receives and says, oh, I'm still missing 10 data fields, for instance, that I need to have for my payroll. What global PPOs have started doing is building outside of the uh, global ACM solution, outside of that, doing like web forms, uh, all kinds of ways to type in data, which is not in the global system. Go, you go out of the system because you need to get that data also across to your local ICP. Otherwise, you cannot do a proper payroll calculation. So from the outset, from the, the blueprint that we've made in our data modeling, this is for us a critical element. Our, our system, our uh, aggregated uh, platform, needs to include already in the basis all these local elements. Because when our payroll professional is working with the system, then they need to be able to enter all the, the data that is required, not only for just a pure HR, but also for payroll in the, in the system. Yeah? So, we, we include in Epix, we include all that data, but also validations, control rules that are the same as in the backend system. So the moment you push that button, send or transfer my data from Epix to the payroll provider, all that data is there that you need to have for the payroll and it's validated and controlled. Yeah, meaning that when the ICP receives the data, they don't, well, they will do the same controls and validations, of course, they always do in the local system, but it's not like, okay, now my customer missed giving me all these data elements. I need to pick up the phone. I need to start talking about, or I need to send an email asking for that data. It's not good for GDPR to start with. 
Uh, and it's definitely not good for the process because somebody has to pay the, <laughs> for the time that is, uh, uh, you know, that is, has to be spent on all this back and forth with the customer. So we built that in from, from the outset. Yeah? It's, it's a huge undertaking and it's, and it's one that requires a full and total collaboration between ourselves and the partner ICPs in the countries. And that's what we signed up for. Maybe just as an aside, we also have a single contract for the 30 countries for payroll services agreement, which is a tripartite contract, which is totally something you will never find, not find any, anywhere else. We sign together, we pay bigs, we sign together with the ICP and the customer on one single contract because both the ICP and ourselves, we are both responsible for a, a, what we call the 100% act end to end payroll. 100% act stands for 100% accuracy, 100% compliance, and 100% timeliness. That's how we want to work with them. Yeah? And that's my, what excites us, but also them. And that's what excites them to give us that information that we need to build our international platform for the 13 European countries. So what you see, if, yeah. if you look at the market of the players and, and what, what is out there, you get the global BPOs, yeah? uh, the very big logos, uh, ADP, the allies, we all, we all know them, uh, of the, of the world region. Uh, the global BPOs that's really global, and then you have the more US, initially US centric or, or Asia centric players that are now also want to have a, a foothold into Europe and the Middle East and Africa. And then we're talking about Ceridian, UKG is coming up, um, you know, uh, Niamo, the Ramcos of this world. And then uh, next to that, and those are still global BPOs, you can say, and next to that you have the payroll aggregators. Now, so we are part of the payroll aggregators, the payroll aggregators built this platform to connect with the uh, local I ICPs. And in that way, we allow the customers to collect all the employee and payroll data in a good way, send it across to the ICP and get the calculated results back to, to the platform. So that's why we want to uh, go to market. And, and, and I'm sure there will be more of Paybix like companies in the future, because this is a market that has been out of scope for the current players. There will be. There's only in Europe, I can tell you, the minus 250 employees per legal entity. It's 100 million employees. Yeah. And it's huge. It's huge. And they don't have solutions these days. And you're right. Uh, at the end of the story, they, uh, while the payroll is one of the most sensitive area, and nobody wants to be caught in a situation of a problem, because that end up on a, on a newspaper very quickly. Uh, and on the other hand, the majority of workers work in in in, in organizations that are under the 250, under the 200, sometimes under the 100 people. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so we have to, oh, sorry, look. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, a lot of these these type of size companies are the backbone behind a lot of economies. And right. they, there's a lot of them out there and they need solutions like this. And, and, you know, as we've discussed, the focus has always been on enterprise and a lot of us have a background in that, in that, uh, in that area. But these, these, uh, these SMEs, these smaller, smaller companies uh, are, I think, at least from what I've seen with some, some of our customers is they, they struggle a bit in these markets and these, where they have these several several different countries where they just have these smaller populations and they don't have suitable solutions to manage it. Yeah, of course, they can always go to an SAP or an ADP or whatever for the bigger countries, but the smaller ones, sure. yeah. that's been a, a challenge for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm totally right, Luke. And and what I would suggest if I, if I can advise people in this, I've been around for a few years in the advising sector, so maybe I have a few things to say is, don't you know when you when you look at this and we are back to the one size fits all when you look at this as a multinational company and and any size you have even if you're hundred thousand or more even people look at it from how do i split geographically do i do one size fits all global yeah or should i say maybe maybe the americas maybe uh europe take asia and middle east with it and asia maybe those three buckets and and, and try to find good Providers, payroll providers, you can deliver to the, to that uh, volume and 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 scope. Not easy to find, but it's easier to find than global payroll providers that can do all the 194 countries and all 195 countries in the world. It's easier, but also, secondly, in your matrix, also say where do I put my bar, right? Global payroll, okay, maybe regional payroll, maybe better, 
but also should I put my bar maybe at 500 plus? You know, we use an ADP and an, an SAP as a solution. Uh, um, the Eureka and the and the global view of ADP and the light. I don't want to make too much publicity for that, but anyway, that's what it is. You can do that. But below 500, below 250, should I still go with you know with an SAP or or should I actually maybe start looking into more focused uh, solutions and services, uh, culture even and uh, language uh, issues? So. So that's the exercise that I think any international company should do if they are thinking about international pain. Yeah, I think that the challenge arises with managing multiple providers then. True, true. Yeah, that's that's uh, a challenge. There's an opportunity for you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sherry. It's, um, you know, the more I see, the more providers, the, the more difficult it is to keep all you know your plates in the air and 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 govern them right. in, in the way you, you want to do that. At the same time, you you can also you you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So if something right. goes wrong right. with one of them, you don't you don't risk to have all your 195 countries and <laughs> to keep that number <laughs> uh, to see to see it go south in the relationship. If such a relationship goes south and you have rolled out 100 countries, yo, know, it can be it can be very bad. Whereas if it goes bad with one in, in Americas, but not with the ones in Europe and in Asia, well, okay, you replace the one in the Americas and then you can right. still continue with the others. But there's good and bad about everything. You're, you're totally right, Sherry. You, you, need, you need to really yeah, think think twice before the you sign time. a contract there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. in reality, there is no such thing as a global payroll. It's a, every country is different. So Absolutely. the question comes down to, do you want the expertise in country? Yeah. Or the big provider. Exactly, and and every country has growth from growth from gross growth to net. And that's the same everywhere, and every country has statutory and regulatory fine fi right. filings. But the, the devil is in the details, and 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 really devil, eh? uh, because you know you don't want to again you don't want to see people picketing in front of your door. <laughs> no, ideally and that right. happens. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it happens. Yes, well, indeed. <laughs> I think we actually came again, HR circle, yeah. full circle. <laughs> full circle. Yeah, yeah full exactly. Circle. exactly. And uh, any closing statement that you would like to make at the end? Yeah, first of all, I, I really enjoyed this. And thanks thanks for so thanks for having me as, as maybe some final um, words or statements, if I may. I've always been thinking, well, when you look at this, you know, go with the motto, Global or regional, huh? in this case, maybe go global or regional where you can and local where you must. But, you know, the must is an important one. Everyone wants to be global or regional. Huh? Everyone wants to scale and size and, and they have the best possible cost opportunities and savings and so. But don't forget this local element. Uh, it's, it's so important. And from there, once that basis, that foundation is there, then you can start thinking, OK, what, what can we now lift? To the higher level of regional or even global, eh? but don't go from the top and then say, and everyone else now needs to follow because we came up with the idea of global payroll. That's the best recipe for disaster, and I've seen it happen unfortunately too ma too many times. And and maybe coming back, one emphasize that I want to do: leave no money on the table. And uh, we've discussed it in the, in the course of the of this session. Um, you know, local payroll providers. You can give you you can get real local expertise with local guidance on how to save on costs from local local payroll providers and you know use them. They find the truffles under the tree in the forest, uh, uh, <laughs> and sometimes there's <laughs> small nuggets, but they can deliver great results. Great results on your bottom line. I think that's a very Thank worthwhile you. conclusion. So, Thank you. Well, Thank thanks. You. Sherry and Luke for, for yeah, being here thanks, with me. Thanks, Rudy, Lovely. for joining us. And, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. Rudy was fabulous. It was uh, so passionate. And uh, <laughs> yeah. thank you again.